we push the envelope past the like traditionally accept schema code and go into even further layers of healthcare. Using their AI and all of the different tools that they have, we're actually able to increase our revenues three, four, and five times. We're not only weathering the storm, but we're actually growing right now. The truth is, even if you're wrong or we're wrong about this, you know, this, you know, kind of promoting and getting that person who's writing that content, or the physician or the doctor or the researcher out there in terms of building up their brand and showing them as an authority, it helps them anyway, even if it has nothing to do with SEO. It yeah. just helps them, helps build their brand. They feel good about themselves. They love you as your market, as a marketing company because they just sell. I'm running up in this you know, New York Times article and, or on WebMD quoted me here or Mayo Clinic quoted me there. Um, and that all helps in general with branding and marketing outside of SEO. So it's kind of like a win-win anyway. Yeah, I always think about it. I was lucky enough to interact and work with Eric Ward quite a bit before he passed away. And he always said, optimize for the user and not for Google. It's the simplest way. It's like, is that in best interest of that patient? Yeah, they're just looking for authoritative information from the authority. So how do we give them and how do we set the standard that this person is the authority on this topic? Right. That's it. And Google's been saying that forever. <laughs> and, were, and all the SEOs are like, no, nah, it doesn't really matter. I just want to get my links. Um, you know, tell, tell me how to get my links. I, I don't care about the user. And it's kind of like the joke, but really Google has gotten there. I mean, I guess when you first started your firm 10 years ago, oh, that was 20, or what, what, you know, it's all 20, 20, or so. 2012. 2012. So that was right around, I think Penguin, Panda launched like the year before, Penguin was just launching I think then. And that's really when everything kind of changed um, with content, really, and links. And then obviously it really changed for the health industry. I guess you saw that change significantly when um, I guess these core updates, which I kind of nicknamed that first big one, like the med medic update. Yeah. And everybody was like, well, half of the SEOs were like, you're an idiot, you don't know what you're talking about. And the other half of the internet was like, that's exactly right. Uh, how do you see that shift when you were doing your work? Did you change anything you had to do? Did it cause you guys to like rethink how you built websites and content and so forth? I think the biggest thing we saw was that what we were talking about with local search, where most of our clients fared well, but we had a few that ranked really well nationally for non-localized search, and they lost a lot of that because they might have been a single location practice. So why would they be ranking for something on the West Coast when they don't even have a physical business over there? So, But they did increase in inquiries. So it's funny to think about that we had to really refocus on what were those high intent searches when patient generation was kind of their key focus. Uh, and then I think the other side is just like, is that charge of authorship where we didn't think about it almost like a media brand back then. Even though we have some single doctor practices that we treat the same way that we really think of them as like a media brand. It's like every piece of content and information, they're an author behind. And how do we show that and prove that they're authority on that particular topic? And that shift heavily came in like the 2013, 2014. And we just keep kind of doubling down and betting on is treating everyone really as a, as a media brand. It seems like they keep escalating that, not just in the health space, but you see it with the health space. With more so you saw it like the past five years with every of these like core update types of things. Less so now, it seems like they're expanding it beyond the health areas right now. I don't, you're not in that area, I don't think as much, but it's just interesting to see the, the, the change. I think the, I think Panda was kind of like the early step to it. And then, like you said, fit 2015, 2017, um, 2019 as well, I think were like the big steps in terms of we as Google or Google was like, we need to rank the most authoritative content in the YMYL space, more so probably in the money, and not in the money space, but more in the health space. Um, and there was a lot of press around that stuff from the New York Times and Wall Street Journal calling them out as being really bad at that and they got better at it. Um, and even now it's like, we're getting a lot of bad press about it. And I think it's just like this cat and mouse game where SEOs are like, how could we make our clients look like they really are the most authoritative in this space? And you're telling your clients to become the most authority in this space by <laughs> getting published and, and showing, showcasing that information. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. It's funny, there's a lot of SEOers that would argue that uh, the YMYL space is really all websites. Like some way, like if you're just collecting payment, that accepts, that affects your finances. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think there was a recent update you even talked about that looks like it, it's been crushing like the gaming industry in the last few days. So they're definitely expanding packs. I think they'll always lead with healthcare because right. uh, my understanding is it's the largest kind of category of search 
on the internet is health related. So it's just something that will never go away. There's trillions of searches each year. Right, for sure. I know Lily Ray has said this many, many times in articles about this, about the structured data being really, really important for showcasing the EAT concept, to use trustworthy authority. I don't agree with that. I mean, Lily, look it down. You can dislike the video <laughs> if you want. Um, I think it does give Google signals about, you know, obviously who wrote it and so forth. But I just think it's so easy for SEOs to manipulate and fake. Um, and we've seen examples of this over and over again where Google would like, I'm not trusting the structured data on this website or actually which results penalties and so forth. And I just don't think it's a good way for Google to, to say, um, this is the definition of a site that is an expertise, has expertise in the concept or authoritative. I think it's more about the content and less about who's writing it. Now, I know Google's been wishy-washy on this topic, mm -hmm. and John Mueller has said certain things, Danny Sullivan has said certain things that said that goes both ways. But you obviously are in this, knee deep, you've been doing this for a long time. What's your thoughts about structured data now that I said I don't think it has anything to do with it? <laughs> uh, no, I will firmly argue on that, but the other side of it is I almost don't care. It's a, it's a tool for us on how we build our websites. So like the, the relational logic of schema to me makes sense to how you build the front end of the site. And it also is the same language. We're not like spamming the schema side and making up language and content and relationships that aren't represented on the front end. So, but I would argue for us and how I'm justifying it is every time we release a different update or a schema uh, feature, right. we're always making some notation. And across the board, almost every client has achieved continual, like really like exponential organic traffic. So if, to me, if we're primary focus and updates are around schema updates and all our clients are receiving continual healthcare search volume organically, they clearly are not doing something wrong. Even an un, a not officially supported um, schema, at least, yeah. Schema.org has its you know, has a huge list, library. But Google only supports a maybe tiny fraction of that according to the rich results page. Yeah, and we lean in fully into the entire Schema.org healthcare library. So give uh, an example of a new one that Google might, or a newish one that Google may not officially support that you've implemented. Uh, case studies is a big one. We just started to release that. Everyone knows the value of reviews, and that was a good example you brought up, is that there was structured data around reviews and people spammed it on their website footer, so then the star showed up in the search result, and then they backed off on that. Where I agree with that, where they're gonna back off in that area, because that was, they were gaming the visual representation of schema and search results, so then they backed off on how the stars were reviewed. But I don't think they're gonna back off on just like the complexity of structured data as a total. So for us, case studies is a big one, is that, uh, we're treating it as kind of like a, a broader scale review where we have literally a, a database process where we're having our doctors take really like their post-care op notes and write a case study and then tell us what condition and procedure that was related to and then we pull in the location and doctor so then we have all that schema structure published on the website. So, but is that content on the website before you had the schema structure or you're creating this new content and, and then assigning the schema structure to so it. This is brand new content that you're publishing on the website. Even I wonder if you didn't even use the schema, if you published that without the schema stuff, and you published that piece of content on the website, would it have the same impact? It's a good question. So and like I was saying, that's, my that's first my, response was like, debate. I almost don't care because it's right. built into our CMS. You might as well do it. Yeah, you yeah. might as well have the schema there. I get it. Why yeah. go back like five years you know, from now and say like, I should have had the schema, but I was doing it anyway because we had the data. Now I have to go back to thousands and thousands of pages of yeah. all my clients and add it now. I get it. My, my, my debate is like, is it the schema that's doing it or is it actual content that you're producing that's doing it? And I, I I'm, I've been wrong a lot. <laughs> I mean, I thought Microsoft uh, Bing would actually have a lot more market share than they do now, and they don't. Um, but I've been wrong many, many times. So I think that's the interesting debate. Um, yeah, again, the way I validate, one of the biggest ones we use as is kind of like an also known as schema. So there'll be a primary, like septal perforation is a good example. That's like, that's the clinical diagnosis. Right. But then we have other clinical names of what it could be called. So we're feeding that data back to, and it's almost like a recursive loop with their showing us the as numbers increase of what are the organic search terms for that, we're then identifying the other medical terms and telling them, hey, these are actually the same thing, just said in a different way. And they're probably smart enough to know that, but we're almost validating the work back to them. Right. So as we keep ranking for more terms for that condition, to me, that's just another validation that the scheme is working. Right. 
But it's so, I, with SEO, it's just so hard to know. That's funny. <laughs> because one is, you're putting in the schema, which is not visible to users. Two is you're probably putting it on the page, visible to users. And three is Google, even if you don't put it on the page, Google probably knows that this term is related to that term, is related to that term, which they're using a lot of AI for anyway, um, to figure that out. Or just basic, you know, keyword mapping to know. It. Yeah, Google's been I, can, much I could argue like the dark war room, like argument that like, they're just down there going, well, let's just create the barrier higher so we do something instead of just letting yeah. them keep stuffing keyword content. Yeah, in. you never know. And yeah, 100%. <laughs>